Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true dead. welcome back to Fallout 2. Well, last time, I may have slightly got myself exiled from a crime family in New Reno because I wasn't just quite polite enough to a crime boss. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but that's fine. That's only one crime family. There's like three more, so we've got plenty of opportunities to not screw up yet. And that brings us right here to the Shark Club, because... I've got an in with Mr. Bishop, the guy who's running the show. Way back in Vault City back in the day, I was given a briefcase by some form of, like, street preacher or something who didn't seem particularly happy with the way Vault City was being run. And he said, deliver that to Mr. Bishop, never open it, never look inside. And I haven't. I've been very, very good indeed. Now, I have put a save down here because I'm a bit suspicious it might be a bomb and this could be a problem. But... Just in case it's not, let's go in, have a chat to Mr. Bishop, and see if I've got an in to maybe working inside the Shark Club. So, we got ourselves a standard casino here, bunch of little machines and gambling tables. Uh, hello there, we'll have a quick chat with you. Can you actually say anything? Uh, no, he hates me because I'm a tribal, so I don't like him either. Also, uh, there's a man in a cage, which is... Ah, hang on. You're a comedian. Right, okay. That's nice. Apparently he's so terrible they keep him in a cage. Lovely. Bishops don't talk to tribal trash. We got better things to do. Right, everyone here is very rude and I don't really like Mr. Bishop. Still, have a chat with the bartender here. See if he's got anything to say because generally bartenders can be useful. And apparently there's an old fellow by a crappy slot machine. You mean old man McGee, mostly harmless, spent near a fortune on that old slot machine, hasn't seen a return in years. I think it's busted. Anyway, he's going to get you something to drink. Okay, so there's a named character by a slot machine that hasn't paid out. I wonder if I can repair that for him. Here we go, old man McGee, right here. Let's have a chat with you, see if you're important for some reason. What do you want, girly? So yeah, you're old man McGee. Why exactly do you keep gambling on this one machine that hasn't paid out in literally years? Damn it, stubborn machine. I'm gonna get my chips back any day now. How long have you been doing this? Close to five years. <laughs> Marvellous. So he's been putting money into this for five years. Uh, good luck to you then. Any chance I can actually, you know, do anything more to help you? Because I feel a bit bad for you. And do you mind if I give it a pull, let you touch my machine and jinx my luck? Hell no, get out of here. Right, so, uh, not interested in me helping. Alright, just keep having a chat with him. What else can I do here? And, uh, yeah, nothing more I can really do, uh, to be honest. Alright, have a little look at the machine here. Can I use the machine? And... Uh, you see a slot machine, it's perhaps the ugliest slot machine you've ever seen in New Reno. Its handle is bent, two of its windows are broken, there are dents all over it. I'm going to put five dollars inside the actual machine, then five more, and five more, 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 five more. Oh, hang on! As you pull the bent handle, you think you hear the machine give a relief sigh, followed by a long silence. Just when you're about to give up on it, you hear something rattling from deep within the machine a few seconds later. Oh, I have just collected the flipping jackpots! <laughs> the machine has finally given up the ghost. It looks like paying off the jackpot was its death rattle. You can't help but feel a little sorry for it. Leave! Absolutely beautiful. And uh, I'm guessing you're going to be very annoyed at me. Now, is he about to actually declare war on me and fire on me? Because if so, not my fault, guys. Take him out. I pumped all my life savings into that one-armed little slut, and she ain't even giving me the time of day. Then you come along and take all of it. I got your number, you little dime store slut. Okay, I don't like the way you're talking to me. Lads, take him outside and shoot him. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm very happy to be very annoyed at you. All right, screw you. Take him out. And, yep, he's willing to actually try and do something to me. And he actually shoots me and does some damage. But at this point, I'm pretty happy to take you out, you stupid bastard. So, here we go. Sadly, I don't actually have... Hang on, check how much health he's got. He can't be too much, right? And 40 hit points. And he's got a hunting rifle together with... Ah! Good ammo. I need that ammo. Uh, so, in which case... Yeah, just shoot him straight in the eyeball, please. Oh, what a surprise, his arm fell off. Right, job done. Right, gun back away, end combat, and... Uh-oh. When you say nearby creatures... Um, by any chance, have I just declared war on Urino? Because 
I feel like he started it. He was very rude. Who's actually about to attack me. Okay, everyone's now about to attack me. Even though he shot at me first. So, oh. No, never mind. Uh, we have now officially ended combat. Beautiful. You guys actually mad at me in any capacity. Are you fine? Ain't got no drugs for you, tribal. No, lovely. We're absolutely A-OK. -okay. In which case, I'll just help myself to his stuff, actually. Marvellous. Yep, the floor manager doesn't seem particularly annoyed at me, so job done right there. He shouldn't have been so bloody rude if he didn't want to end up dead. So, uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah, tell me about this particular casino. So, supposedly the best casino in town, but they all say that, so that doesn't really help me, to be honest. And I'm guessing Mr. Bishop owns the place. Yes, yes he does. Marvellous. Ooh, and I can offer to be a dancer for the night if he wants. Right, hello. Sure, be good for business. Dressing room's in the bag. Oh, marvellous, I get to dance. This is marvellously good news. Okay, so uh, I do have sex appeal. Ooh, nice, I've dressed up in my tribal gear. Nice and sexy. So do I do anything right now? Well, I assume that's me, by the way. Wait, that's not me. I don't have flipping red hair. Um, wait, which? Is that me right now? I mean, it's female, but it's not got my hair, so okay. Right, I had like $8,900 when I started. I seem to have about that much again, so I'm not 100% convinced I've been, you know, paid. And there we go. Am I about to be paid here? And, oh, there we go. Got about, yeah, $400, $500 there. Not bad at all. You were smoking out there. The next Tracy Lords. Come back in a week for another show. Aha! Finally, that sex appeal trait I took has actually paid off for something. Marvellous. And yes, indeed, my erotic dance routine was officially a success. Beautiful. Now that I actually work here, by the way... No, I'm not allowed to go upstairs. Okay. Let's actually just try downstairs first, then. Because I'm guessing Bishop's upstairs. And I can't help but notice you appear to be keeping, uh, yeah, an actual boxer prisoner in your basement, which seems a little bit on the odd side. And you've also got yourself a secret underground boxing ring here. Very cool. Right, is he locked in here or can he get out? And no, he can get out. Hello, who are you? And uh, me like your ears. Okay, possibly he's taken a few too many punches to the head there. Let's just actually have a little Luke in the lockers here and... Uh, Got ourselves uh, plated boxing gloves. Okay, that's interesting. Someone has accidentally slipped metal plates into these boxing gloves. It could technically be considered cheating, but you prefer to think of it as an increased opportunity to dispense bone-crunching damage. Fine, so if I want to do, like, unarmed stuff, I could do it with these guys, but I don't think I need to do that. Still, we now know Bishop is actually, yeah, leading some form of cheating ring. By the way, I'll be having some stim packs too. And drugs. May as well take the drugs. You never know when you're going to be needing drugs. Right, that's all we got downstairs, so can't really go past the bodyguards to the back yet. Let's go and actually try and find uh, Mr. Bishop himself, and I'm guessing, aha, I'm guessing he's up on the top floor. But we've also been warned about his family. We've seen people just, like, talking about them in the background, saying, uh, yeah, watch out for Bishop's daughter, I think, was flagged in particular as a problem. And there we go, we've got Mrs. Bishop over there, his wife, together with Angela Bishop, that'll be the daughter. Okay, have a word with the wife first, because I can't remember if we know anything about her, but we may as well go and have a little chat while we're passing by. She's quite attractive, with a low-cut dress made out of golden gecko skin. She studies you for a moment, then frowns. Yes, what is it? Um, who are you precisely? And I think I should be the one asking that question. Well... You can. Please do. I'm happy to answer it. It's just you didn't really start off with that. Also, would you mind turning to face me? This is a very odd conversation. I'm literally speaking to your back right now. And yes, indeed, she is the wife of the Bishop family. So, Anne Bishop, my name's John. What, pray tell, do you think I can do for you? And, uh, all right, maybe I should ask something. Uh, yeah, how do I be the most polite here? Tell me about your family. There's nothing to say. There's an extended family of hired thugs, mercenaries, whores, pushers and slaves. But that really is all the Bishop family amounts to. Right. Oh, this is going to be a bit of a risky one. Yeah, it sounds like your marriage isn't too healthy, Mrs. Bishop. No, my husband is in the business of accumulating power. That seldom leaves room for anything else. In addition, my precious daughter has quickly learned what being a woman means in New Reno. Ah, yeah, we've heard about this. She's a bit into drugs and sex. I think I saw people mentioning in the background. 
So my daughter Angela, she's become quite the little tramp, like mother, like daughter. Right, okay, so this isn't a particularly happy place, gotcha. And if we ask her about the Gek, she knows the vault sits in the fact there was a Gek there once upon a time, but it's already been used, so sadly, not much use now. And here we go, Angela Bishop. Haven't seen you around before, you want a daddy's new horse. Uh, no actually, just passing through, uh, kind of like shit through the intestines, her. Don't stay too long, bitch, or you're gonna get hurt. Right, don't say bitch back to her, because her dad runs this casino. Could be bad news. And yeah, tragically, uh, she won't really speak to me. Fine, I'm guessing there's a quest related to her we might run into down the line, uh, possibly if we go and speak to Bishop. Still, I can't help but notice there's a side room here that seems to be locked. Okay, I don't really dare unlock that in full view of several guards, so uh, try this one because... Okay, you're facing away, so uh, can we unlock that there? Yeah, there we go. You don't seem to mind that because these rooms are full of actual bookshelves. So I'm very happy to potentially help myself to... Hello! Yeah, this'll do. I'll help myself to a bit of stuff here. I mean, this, this has got to be worth some stuff and... Already at maximum weight capacity. Right, guys, I'm going to need your help with this. Oh, and double free leather armor as well. And when I say free, I mean, you know, we're stealing it, but whatever. Right, okay. This is a good place to get kitted up if you happen to come to New Reno nice and early in the game. Gotcha. Right, so I'm guessing those aren't supposed to be bookcases. Those are like weapon cases. Still, I've robbed Mr. Bishop. Good start here. Now, can I go through? I do want to have official business. I've got the suitcase. So, uh, here we go. Got a suitcase for him from Mr. Moore. So I do have legitimate business here. He says you could head on up. Beautiful. So I do indeed have an in with another crime boss here. Lovely. So up we go and uh, where are we right now? Oh, hello. This place is nice. Oh, a top floor. Is that an outdoor swimming pool? Very nice indeed, though possibly radioactive. Yes. Okay, so I'm guessing that's Mr. Bishop with a couple of guards right there. Then his private quarters, or presumably the private quarters of him and his entire family, because yeah, there's three big bedrooms here. So I'm guessing, uh, yeah, him, and that'll be his daughter in the middle there, because yeah, all the graffiti, because we know she's got a bit off the rails there. Marvellous. Anything else interesting here, by the way? Potentially some drugs in the daughter's room, I'm not sure, and uh, is that a safe at the back there? Yeah, combination safe. Now, I wonder if I'm good at lockpicking to open... Oh, hang on. There's a safe in every room. I wonder if I'm good enough to open those, because I have been investing in lockpicking. Right, let's not do that just yet. Let's get a bit in with the family. So even under all that get-up, you still look like one of them tribals. The boys said you got a briefcase for me from a mutual acquaintance. Let's see it. And, uh, yep, just here you go. You're all being very rude to tribals. I don't like you very much, because you all seem a bit rude to me. But, whatever, for more alright, says you check out Tribal, lucky for you, you come in here with a bad rep, you're asking for a quick trip to the sky. So, I asked the case, no, I'm just going to, well hang on, all of these are a little bit on the rude side to be honest, because uh, I've delivered the case but then asked for payment, I'm pretty sure more said don't ask for payment, asking what's in the briefcase is rude, and glad everything's in order, I've got to be going, that's basically me excusing myself. I'm not sure what the right option is here, but I guess I'm just going to say glad everything's in order. He'll stop me if he wants me to do something else. Hold your horses, tribal. I have some questions for you first. Good. Good, good, good. Right, so we can go a little bit further down the line with him, and I haven't been rude yet. Good, good. So, where do you know more from? He's trying to play politics among the tribes now. Ha, that boy missed his calling. And yeah, I met him in Vault City spreading the word. I offered to help him out by delivering the briefcase. Or I just happened to run across him during my travels. I offered to help him out by delivering the briefcase. Let's be specific, actually. Say it was indeed in Vault City. Damn human of you. For all his preaching, old Tom Cadmore can't seem to step off his soapbox long enough to actually do any legwork. Still, that don't make him any different to any other NCR boy. Ah, he's a NCR, is he? Right, so I'm guessing the raiders who are attacking Vault City, they're NCR, and that supposed preacher saying how upset society was, he doesn't actually believe it, he's just trying to agitate to make the NCR taking over more likely, because people are going to be unhappy. Right, I see where we're going with this, gotcha. So, uh, he does seem to have a certain way with words. At some point, the work's got to be done. Yeah, he does seem to have a certain way with words. He was fairly eloquent, if I recall correctly. Of course, being able to whip a crowd into a frenzy ain't too bad if you're going into politics. 
You ain't NCR2, are you? Tomcat's about the only one of them I can stand for a moment. And yeah, I'm from the NCR. Not really, I'm just a traveller. I just agreed to help him because I needed work. So I've gained 500 XP and no one seems to have shot me yet. So that's good. So a little slice of Vault City Insider, some of that precious tech that frigid bitch Lynette doesn't want to part with. But hey, Tribal, I ain't paid you yet. Here's your cut. Beautiful. And by any chance do you have any more work going? Because I've kind of fallen out with one crime family, so I'm trying to find another one to get in with right now. Yeah, I got a job for you. I have this problem down south in NCR. This fellow Weston has a big mouth that needs to be shut. Permanently, half a grand, easy money. $500 for murder's a bit on the low side, to be honest, but I guess I've murdered people for less. In fact, I murdered a guy just downstairs because he called me a slut, so whatever, eh? Ah, but there's more. I want this guy dead, but it can't look like he was aced. Don't put a bullet in his skull, don't stab him to death, don't do anything that smells of a hit. And uh, how exactly do you want it done in that case? That's the way it has to be done. You piss off anyone down there, make them think you had anything to do with that son of a bitch kicking the bucket. I'll make sure no one can identify your corpse. Okay, this is fine. Do you have any suggestions? Like, I don't know, giving me some poison or something. No, he's getting very snappy at me and I don't like the way he keeps calling me tribal. That's very rude. And yes, indeed, if you want it to look like an accident, is there anything else you can tell me about Weston? All right, fair enough. What do you need to know? All right, so where is he located? He's got a ranch in the NCR. Follow the Brahmin stink. You should find him without too much trouble. All right, bit more, please. Uh, yeah, kin or family witnesses to worry about. No kids, no wife, no family to speak of. Might be some ranch hands. Shouldn't be too much trouble. And uh, yeah, the ranch hands. Like, if they die, is that going to be a problem? Probably aren't. For the head count, I haven't got one. I know he's got workers, most likely more than one. Dealing with them is your problem, though. Okay, not very specific over whether or not they can die in what's clearly a murder, but whatever. And nothing special about his routine. All we know here is, yeah, Brahmin rancher, animal herder, that's it. Okay, then, I guess we just make that happen. And I have lost a bit of karma for accepting the job of murder, but then again, I've gained a bunch of karma for murdering bad people. So I think on balance, I'm still a very, very good person, despite all of the grave robbing. And now that we're friends, or at least, you know, I'm working for you, do you mind if I go through this here door? Would that be okay? Because, like, we're friends and stuff. I think it would be just fine. Good, because there doesn't seem to be much in the way of security around here, so that means uh, it's time to start robbing you guys blind. Alright, let's make this happen here. We've got to hack open this here safe, and uh, there is a ka-clank as the safe opens. Right, so uh, safe that is... Uh, ah, I assume this is his wife's, so uh, precious necklace, little bit of ammo, nothing special... $500! As much as he was going to pay me for the hit, lovely. To go with, yeah, some stim packs and a gun too. Right, next up, the daughter's room. Just go through the shelves, pick up a little bit of money. Right, so yeah, she's got booze, she's got lighters, she's got some leather. She doesn't have much in the way of money, presumably she spends it as fast as she gets it. Keep on cracking the safes open, beautiful. My lock picking is well up to the task here. And yeah, just drugs and... Ah! Leather and rope. Marvellous. Oh, bloody hell. Right, okay, so the safe... The safe just exploded. Luckily, it didn't explode... Oh, did... Wait, hang on. Who are... Who are you? Who are you and how long have you been there? Because... Uh, were you always standing there? Sorry, I think I overlooked you somehow. Okay, we need to kill this guy. And yeah, just as quick as you can, please. At 50 hit points... And he's now blind. Right, guys, we need to finish off this bodyguard. I think I may have just declared war on Mr. Bishop. Okay, combat's over for now, but I suspect this is not going to work out well for me. Still, we do at least have ourselves, ooh, special things. So that's a super stim pack. Issue of cat's paw. Someone wanted that, but I can't remember what for or who. Raider's map. Ooh. The Raider's map, you say. And uh, Bishop's holodesk. Okay, let's just grab both of them, have a little look, see what we got here. So, uh, this map, look at that there, and uh, Northern California, Reno and surrounding caravan trails outlined in red. There is a red X far to the east of Reno, with a raider's scroll beneath it, weighs one pound. 
Right, so that'll be the raiders I was looking for that are attacking Vault City. So yeah, Bishop's got some form of uh, big interest in these guys. Here we go, Holodis. So Holodis contains incriminating information on Bishop's secret deal with the NCR. Apparently Bishop hired mercenaries to attack Vault City in the hope that Vault City would turn to NCR for military aid. This Holodisk is audio only and has no text data. Vault City might be interested in this. Right. So, he's done a deal with the NCR to basically, yeah, hire some raiders to try and scare Vault City into joining the NCR. But, he's also working against the NCR and is involved in their politics, very dirty politics in fact, because he's hired me to go and kill someone prominent down there. So, he's kind of playing both sides, I see. Now, am I about to be immediately murdered because I killed that guy? Or did it happen in a sufficiently secluded location that me and you are cool with each other? And apparently we're cool with each other. Lovely. Uh-oh. You got some balls. Why didn't you just tack a sign on your chest that says, Dumb motherfucker, eat lead bitch. Alright, so, I think he knows. Yeah, there totally isn't a guy in there right now, though possibly if you actually, yeah, trigger the trap then that causes him to appear. Okay, let's try this again here, but this time let's not get caught. Yeah, the problem is my trap skill is kind of awful. So, uh, my chance of actually detecting and disarming this trap is uh, relatively low. Doesn't look like there's a trap on the safe. Well, you're not very good at this, are you? Because yes, yes there flipping is. Here we go, I found the trap, but I failed to disarm it. Yeah, my trap skill is just too low and my companions aren't actually able to step in to help. So once again, I failed to disarm, failed to disarm. Come on, sooner or later I might be able to figure this out. The problem is I don't know whether I'm dice rolling right now or whether it's just physically impossible if your trap skill is below a certain level. Okay, I can't get in just yet, so let's leave that for the time being because it's possible if we just do a bit of work for this guy, he'll actually come around to trusting us and bring us into the conspiracy as time goes by. Also, do you mind the fact I just went into your room and... Uh, okay, he doesn't mind, lovely. Okay, well I'm not leaving town just yet, I've barely even arrived, so uh, may as well take this opportunity to, yeah, figure out what else is going on in the world. So, uh, there's the jungle gym, I think that's called right here, so uh, have a little look-see at this place, and, uh, okay, big boxing place, and aha, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, just in theory, if I was to go and, uh, I think I've got a plan here, those boxing gloves I saw... Let's just quickly go and grab them, because uh, if there was some form of, say, competitive fighting, I might be able to give myself a bit of an edge. Here we go. Damage range of 2 to 6. Not spectacular, but my default unarmed damage was only 1, so uh, it is definitely a lot better, yes. And here we go, right by the boxing ring, Stuart Little, the best agent in all of Reno. Someone's done you a disservice not telling you about me, darling. Got a name. I'm John and I'm looking to box, actually. You want to box? All right, now I've heard it all. Look, most job opportunities in Reno for women are... Well, from the looks of it, maybe those jobs weren't cut out for you. Look, I've got sex appeal. You can literally look at my character sheet. It says sex appeal. I don't know why everyone's being so bloody mean to me. And yes, indeed, uh, there are no women boxers right now. So if you were the first show in town with a woman boxer, people might show up in flipping drove Stewart, Think it through. So he's going to give me a chance, but no promises, and half the winnings, no arguments. You know what? That's probably fair. So, what do we need to actually do here? Ooh, we need to come up with a little moniker first. So, uh, John the Hurricane, John the Brawler, Jabby, Spinning Jenny, Piston Hurricane, and Big Bad Mother. Now I'm going to be Jabby. Jabby the Boxer. Beautiful. And apparently we're going straight flipping in. Round one. Though, how does this work, given this is like, you know, a turn-based game? But, all right, fine, whatever. And apparently I weigh 121 pounds. Marvellous. Is that much for a boxer? I don't know. Well, he weighs 61 more pounds. So, okay, that's probably bad in that case, because I suspect some of that mass is indeed muscle. Muscle I don't have, but... He's going to kill me, isn't he? Round one. Okay, so we are literally doing an actual turn-based fight here. Still, I can figure out how strong he is. And uh, 90 out of 90 hit points, wielding a special boxer weapon. Okay, I've got a special boxer weapon too. It's called cheating gloves. So this is going to be absolutely fine. 
I'm going to stay where I am and let him come to me. So, yeah, if I just move, say, uh, three in this direction. Uh, so, you, my good man, uh, walk over here if you'd be so kind. Uh, and that should hopefully give me... Uh, can I get in? Yeah. One, two. Uh, and now I can get in a double-aimed punch. So, oh, yeah, I'm not so good at this, am I? Okay, um, go for the arms. No, go for the groin. Is that allowed? Uh, and you missed. All right. Um, keep going for that, actually. And I missed again. Right, so basically this is not going well. Hit for two. I didn't bother healing up before this fight, did I? No, no, I didn't. Right, um, punch him in the face. And sooner or later, I have to actually hit him, right? I mean, okay, just keep going for the dick. And... Okay, I've missed four times in a row now. So, just like, you know, wrap up there. Hit for one. Hit for three. Oh, yeah, I'm not allowed to wear metal armor. That's no good. Right, sooner or later, we actually have to... Oh, was that a hit? Four hit points. Nice. Okay, keep going. Keep going for it. Knock him down. Just keep hitting him in the dick. Apparently, there's no rules about that. There are, however, rules about me using healing items. So, this could be a bit of a problem. Right, probably best to just go for three punches. One and... A two, and a miss, and a five. Okay, so we are doing something to him. All right, he's down to 72. So not sure whether I can win this war of attrition, but I am doing damage to him faster than he's doing it to me. And I do get more hits in per turn. The problem is, yeah, I'm actually a little bit on the inaccurate side. Still, that was 11 in a single round. That's not bad. Okay, it's taken a while, but we are actually winning this one right now. He's down to 22 hit points. I'm on 24 right now. And if I can actually hit him... Oh, do you just go down for the count? He is now down. That's good. Because now, now I can start wailing on him. And now I think, yeah, I'm much more likely to hit him. Yeah, punch him in the head. There we go. And I'm pretty sure he's decided he's done. Kill him, Jabby! There we go. Uh-oh. Was that only the first round? Because uh, I feel like he's, like, you know, dead at this point. Okay, round two. He better not have got his health back because I didn't get my health back. And no, he's down to 13. All right, that's all fine in that case. Right, I'm just going to go over here. He can just run over to me and waste his turn. So there we go. Right, he's down to very little right now. Let's just go over to, yeah, just standard punching here. So, and a one, and a miss, and a two, and also a miss, and a three, and also a miss. Okay, this is fine. Everything's under control right now. Yeah, now we're actually hitting him. Damn it. Three, six, and he's down to almost nothing. We've almost got this. Unless he gets, like, all criticals all the time... We're going to win this fight right here. Let's knock him the flip down. Come on. Come on. He's almost dead. And I think that's it. Yes, he's now bleeding out. And I win the fight. Nice. Only 100 XP, mind. Do I get anything else for that? And the winner is... Jabby the John, or John the Jabby, or how does my title work? I've no idea. Actually, that's nice. I get 100 XP for killing him. Another 500 for actually, yeah, winning that boxing fight. Very, very nice indeed. And I'm not quite ready for another fight yet, unfortunately, because, yes, I'm very wounded right now. So, maybe I'll come back later, Stuart. Ah, yes, and one other thing in this part of the world. The Golden Globes Porn Shop Studio, whatever this is. So, uh, we need to come and have a bit of a chat with these people. Am I allowed to star in porn? Because I just did a very successful erotic dance routine. Alright, everyone loved it. I was paid like $400, which feels like a lot to me. So, uh, here we go. Uh, one of the Corsican brothers. So, are you the new fluffer? And I'm, I'm not gonna ask, because just if you don't know, don't ask, it's fine. What if I say I sure am? No, I'm just going to say, what is this place? So, this old place, this here's the Golden Globes, a film studio, probably the only one still erect and standing in the world, uh, but enough about this place, you looking for a job, honey tits. I mean, you know what? I guess so. Sure, if I'm allowed to work in this place. Head in the back, start waxing the shafts, here's your pay, five dollars. Um, I mean... I guess if you want to work in this industry, you have to start at the bottom. I've also just ended up poisoned as a result of that. Luckily, I do have some anti-venom on me, but bloody hell. And no, unfortunately, that doesn't open up any new work for me. Just the same thing again. So let's just, like, 
not do that anymore, actually. Well, that guy is labelled as one of the Corsican brothers, but I don't see another Corsican brother. Everyone else here is either a bodyguard or an actress or, in general, a woman. So, uh, yeah, no one else is a Corsican brother. So I'm not sure where the other one is. Uh, we might need to track him down later. Still, let's not do any of that. One good thing we have picked up is, yeah, the robe on the ground is actually, uh, yeah, the same robe as was worn by the Unity guys over in Fallout 1. So uh, I might just slip that into the trunk of my car just in case I run into any of those guys later, might be a good disguise if there's like, say, I don't know, Super Mutant Refuge or something I need to sneak into. Also, slight concern, um, my car's gone missing a flipping again. Jules, where's the car this time? How many more times until we start bloody locking it? And, okay, so on this occasion I can't actually ask him. Hang on. Jules, where's the cocking car? Okay, I definitely didn't just leave it at the chop shop. It's not here. So, uh, that means, yeah, I drove it away, but where the hell has it bloody ended up? Uh-oh. I suspect something's gone wrong with my car, and I'm not sure it was supposed to. I think I may have just lost it somehow. Right, so I found the car. It's up here at the north of 2nd Street, because I'm guessing when I came back into town some point, I used the little kind of fast travel system when I arrived, say, take me to 2nd Street, and the car was just here. So good, I haven't lost the car. You know, again. Right, crime family number three. Let's have a little look see in here. And I feel like I'm going to like these guys least of all, because these are the guys who are deliberately getting mining communities hooked on drugs so they can control them. So uh, these guys are dicks. Don't like them. But yeah, let's just go and have a chat with them anyway. And I'm guessing this will be the boss's room right here. So, let's start off with, yeah, more Dino's men. Uh, what the hell do you want? Okay, you don't want to chat. How about you, Mr. Doorman? You don't want to chat either. Right, so, uh, more Dino's. Hang on, the more Dino's? Were they the ones with, like, little Jesus and big Jesus or something? Uh, more Dino's men. Big Jesus, more Dino. Marvellous. So let's start off with him. Hello, I'd like to work for you, please. Well, I don't really. I'd rather, like, bring you down. But I'd like to know what your quests are at the bare minimum. And he looks sick with fever, sweat trickles down his face, and stains his clothes. Right, so I'm guessing you're suffering from withdrawal of some description. I'm Jesus Mordino. You'll address me as Senor Mordino. What is your business with me? I'm looking for work, my good man. You are a woman. What I need done is not woman's work. Right, just FYI, last person who spoke to me in vaguely these terms is now dead in pieces on a casino floor, so I'd watch your bloody tone, mate. And give me any bloody job, I can make this work. So I've worked for you. Take this package to the stables north of Reno. Give it to a man, Ramirez, then return. Okay, that sounds easy enough. I'm not going to ask what's inside. That would be very rude indeed. Uh, so, all right, I'll take care of that. No other stables are. Pretty sure those are on my map already. Let's go flip and do this. Oh, apparently we're just teleporting there, which means I've left the car behind, which is mildly annoying. Uh, right, is one of you guys Ramirez by any chance? Okay, so we got two buildings here. One small building right here. Then over on the other side, we got ourselves, yeah, a bigger building. Right, need to find someone to speak to here. Try the other building. Someone here's got to say, hey, I see you're holding the package. That's rather useful. No, no one wants to say hello to me. So I guess I'll just try opening the gate and see how that goes. And they haven't shot me yet, so that's nice. All right, so jet production facility full of slaves uh, together with a handful of Mordino's men and uh, a hatch at the rear. There's actually a way down into a basement or something. Okay, uh, just keep bumbling around here. I'm supposed to be here. I've got the package. So just, yeah, head down here. What's going on? And if we're very... Aha! Here we go. We are very lucky. Looks like a way to potentially cut from one side to the other together with... Okay, film equipment. Not exactly what I was expecting there, but all right. Still going to find this Ramirez chappy. Here we go, we got someone unique over there. Can I get through here? No, this is like a little storage room or something. Still, I'll gladly help myself to whatever's inside. Not much, mine, just a bit of jet. So I tell you what, I'll take that because I can sell that for easy money down the line. Right, that over there is going to be Myron. Good. So let's actually just go around and speak to him. But we're going to need yeah, the guard's permission to do so. Bear in mind, I'm not really actually supposed to be here for Myron. I'm supposed to be here for Ramirez, but I just can't bloody find him. And 
Okay. Ooh, uh, do you want me to keep standing here, handsome, or have your eyes had their fill yet? He's going to turn me down, because apparently I'm really, really bloody ugly. Chica, unless Myron suddenly went blind, you ain't going in there. I know his taste right. He ain't interested in any skanky jet-begging whore. People have got to stop being so rude to me, all right? This is starting to hurt my feelings. Okay, I don't actually have an appointment with Myron yet, so I'm going to leave that be. Sooner or later, someone will ask me to speak to them. And here we go. We've got ourselves... Uh, aha. The stables. Literally, stables of uh, people being fed drugs. And then also being, yeah, dissected afterwards. Lovely. And we've got ourselves a head researcher, Marjorie Reed, here. So still not Ramirez, but at least you're willing to talk to me. And uh, what's going on here precisely? I'm very busy, if you don't mind. Uh, who are you? How did you get in here? And uh, your barn door's open. Get it? I kill me. Is that an American idiom? I'm not familiar with it. Look, I'm sorry to bother you. All right, I'm just looking for Ramirez. Ah, there he is. Last bloody room I tried. So, you, my good man, I've got a package to give to you. So, about time. We're running almost out of jet. Can't imagine where it all goes. So, you take care now, except... Hang on, no, no, don't be rude to him. Don't be rude to him. Big JC, he takes care of us. Just last week, I caught three slaves who were dumb enough to run, so I get to reward C, and you ain't getting shit, so just bend and fetch me, I'm a guard. What does that sentence even remotely mean? You just bend and fetch. You just bend and fetch me, I'm a god. Oh, he's saying I just do manual labour. He's more important to me because he's a guard. Got it. Well, that's just flipping great, all right? You take care now. I'm just going to leave you alone. So uh, that's that done. Anything else I can actually get out of you? No, he just wants me to basically naff off. So probably best we head back to town and check in with that guy. So... Uh, yeah, okay. They're working on developing... I think someone said... Uh, yeah, was it Jules who told me they were working on Super Jet? Or, well, presumably Ultra Jet, as that does show up in the future. So, alright. Ultra Jet they're working on right now. Though, uh, it kind of feels like, yeah, their boss is not in great shape at the minute. Back to New Reno, if you'd be so kind. Uh, and if we're lucky, we won't run into any trouble. And we have not. Right, so, straight back to... Where are we going? Yeah, Virgin Street will be just fine. And yeah, the car doesn't teleport because I didn't actually take it. All right, Senor Mordino, I've done what you asked. Caused no trouble. Everything was exactly right. And I suspect Jesse does know they're torturing people with drugs. Yes. Here's your payment. 100 chips for a simple delivery. More than enough. Yes, indeed it is. I have more work for you. I need somebody to collect my percentage from the Corsican brothers. They are late in their payments. Oh, I'm good with this. I did this with the Salvatores, so this is nice and simple. And if they give you trouble, if they make excuses, hurt them. So this time I'm not just supposed to say I'm a company man, I'm supposed to straight up wound them if there's trouble. So, alright guys, let's go do that. So, Mr. Corsican, remember that time you paid me five dollars to actually get myself infected with a disease doing some rather unpleasant work? Good news! I work for your boss now, and I've been authorised to hurt you if you don't pay up right now. Sorry about the misunderstanding. Here you go, 250 chips. Say hello to Big Jesus for me. And before you're all quick to run me out of here, why don't you tell me about this little operation? Right, so now he's being a lot more polite. Gotcha. And uh, what can we do for you today? Yes, have you got time to audition me? I think I could be a star, all right? I am made for more than mere fluffing. All right, the world is going to be my oyster. Ooh, I actually can. Right, see if you've got what it takes. I mean, we're pretty booked. We can try you out, okay? Some extras over here, please. Uh, hurry it up. Ooh, do as the man directs. Right, so uh, my character has low charisma and low endurance. So I feel like this isn't going to fly. Sorry, honey tits. You're pretty and you're flexible enough. It's just you ain't got the endurance we need. Uh, work out a little. Maybe we can do some business. Right, so try and work on my endurance. I'll be back after a very long shower. Goodbye. Still, on the plus side, I was at least allowed to audition, so I'm moving up in the world from Fluffer. All right, Senor Mordino, another nice easy job. Here's your money, no questions asked whatsoever. There you go. Half is yours. They'd already paid me this month. I like to keep them on their toes. Marvelous. So what needs to happen next? So one last job. There is a man who must die. 
Has the corpse got a name, my good man? Ooh! The Salvatores! I hate the Salvatores because they bloody hate me! This is marvellous! He's killed many of my men, many proud men of the Mordino family, he butchered them in the street like dogs, his hand clenches into a fist. It is my will, this man dies. Alright, this actually works for me, though I will say, yeah, they do have laser pistols that slice people in half. Does that make you afraid? If so, leave. No? I'll do it, because I don't like this guy. So he hides in his bar, he's a coward, he never leaves his room upstairs. When he is dead, return. Alright, this is useful, but yeah, you say that he's wounded. Well, we know that already, yeah, he's got like breathing apparatus or something. The butcher's legs are weak. He also has difficulty breathing, he takes air through an oxygen tank. Ah, I might be able to arrange an accident here, but unfortunately... I doubt I'll be allowed inside anymore, I've kind of already burnt my bridges with that guy. So in which case, right guys, it's time to just straight up do some murder. So this bastard who is very very rude to me, time for a little bit of payback I'd say. Especially as yeah, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on the equipment. Okay, before we do this though, make sure we know what we're actually, you know, taking on here. So, uh, this outside, uh, that's a pimp. Not actually one of Salvatore's men. Inside, uh, we've got ourselves uh, four bodyguards and a fifth in the casino. So when we come back downstairs, uh, there is going to be trouble again. I've only got three, and yeah, looks like we're wearing similar armour. Nip upstairs here, we got ourselves, hang on, that's three of mine and three of yours too, uh, together with Mr. Salvatore himself. Now hang on, where's, where's he? There he is, he's down over there. Right, okay, so I see what we're doing here. I'm at full health right now. Get out, yeah, weaponry, make sure that's all ready to go. I think we can make this work. And a quick scan before we begin. Yeah, 70 hit points on the two guys other than Mason, who's on 110. So, in which case, probably the best thing I can do is they are wearing armor is... One, check what type of actual ammunition I'm using right now. Because, yeah, I need to use the armor piercing. These guys have totally got armor. There we go, armor piercing in this thing. Right, let's see if we can actually make this happen. So, uh, we just want to launch a surprise attack on these guys as fast as possible. So, uh, 85 in the eyes. And that's going to do 24. And just basically keep shooting him right there. And that is another big hit, lovely. Causes serious pain. They start shooting at me, but actually my metal armor gives me massive damage reduction against laser weaponry. So actually, your laser pistols are kind of worthless at this point. Yes, I'd forgotten about that, but that's just perfect. Laser weaponry is pretty damn good, but yes, metal armor's got special, I think it's like 85% damage reduction. Oh, well this, this is just absolutely perfect. Right, you my good people. You're going to start going down very fast indeed. Now we just need to start getting some, yeah, criticals in the penis or the head or whatever. 9 and 11. Uh, bit of damage in there. Not great. And, oh, they're just doing nothing to me. They're doing absolutely nothing. Oh, this is just great. And these guys are just being knocked down. No problem whatsoever. More shots to the head, please. Uh, you guys just use burst fire or whatever. Right, is everybody dead? Uh, Aside from the boss at this point, because I believe that's what's going on. So in which case, everybody just get in here, please. Uh, and now, does he have a gun? I don't know if he's got a gun, but I can at least get in one shot at him in the corner. So... Or maybe I can't. No, I'm out of ammo. That's a bit unfortunate. Right, well, get a reload and just move into the room then. Everybody on me, please. He may or may not be armed. If he is, uh, he's not doing anything right now, so just take a shot right there. 25 hit points critical, he's not wearing any armour, and he can't take too much more of this. Just keep moving towards him, please. Everybody into this room too, and one, two, keep on shooting him. You need to go down, my good man. I did the job for you, alright? You asked me to do a job, I did the job. And then what did you do? You said, I'm not going to work with you anymore. So honestly, you stupid loser, you've brought this on yourself. And I'll be actually having all of your flipping money and medicine as well. Together with, oh yeah, more medicine, more energy weapons. We got ourselves flipping laser weaponry. This is good stuff.
Okay, so time to see how this thing compares to what I've got here. So, uh, Magnum is, yeah, 12 to 18, range of 20, 2 to 3, 20 to 30, range of 30, which is pretty damn good. Uh, this thing is uh, 10 to 22, uh, range of 35. Okay, that's actually pretty darn good, all things considered. So the low damage range is a little bit lower than the Magnum, but the higher damage range is higher to a greater degree. Now, by any chance, has this actually got itself... No, it's a 5 basic, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Against certain enemies, it might be worth doing. But yeah, here's the thing. My metal armor has 80% damage reduction against laser, together with damage threshold of 7, which makes me pretty much invulnerable to laser weaponry while I'm wearing this stuff, which is really, really damn nice. But also, I think these guys are wearing Mark II armor, not the old Mark I, which is actually, yes, yeah, superior, so I can move my companions over to that too. Right, all mopped up. It was only Mason that had the Metal Mark II, so I've given that to Sulik, because I like Sulik slightly more. Vic is still on Metal Armor Basic. But, now that we actually step downstairs, uh, assuming there's still trouble, which there's probably going to be, and... Okay. Or there's not going to be. Um, are you guys totally okay with... No, I thought they might be planning to actually shoot me. Unfortunately, the lasers pretty much bound straight off. So you stupid light bringers are actually kind of completely worthless. So you can just be shot. And you can just be shot too. There we go. You're losing strength nice and fast. Yeah, you just try and flipping shoot me. The lasers literally bounce off. And they are just going down like crazy because, yes, would you believe bullets are working a whole lot better than actual flipping? Did you just absolutely nail me in the back? You did as well. Bloody Vic, this is why you don't get the good armor, you stupid bastards. Right, one guy explodes. And guy number... Ooh, I'm out of ammo. Sorry, need to reload. Actually, no, I don't. I'll just go over to my other gun. That's easier than reloading, which I also didn't bother reloading. But screw it, I'm going to go for you anyway. 80% right in the penis, and you're down on the ground. Beautiful. You just murdered me, didn't you? Vic, I cocking hate you. Okay, this time, I'm standing behind Vic, rather than in front of him. So that's all looking much better already. I've also got a horrible feeling that what just happened there is I think Vic may have missed, or rather... In some capacity managed to, um, yeah, actually with a kind of a big spray burst thing, hit like the bartender. And now everyone's going to decide that actually I'm the enemy. You're about to start declaring war on everybody. Because the bartender's definitely attacking and uh, someone else is moving in this direction too, potentially. Yeah, you're shambling over here. I mean, I hope I don't need to kill you, whoever the hell you are. Right, bartender definitely needs to go down. He's dead. Now, are we good or are, like, more people needing to die at this point? No, we good. Marvellous. So, 800 XP right there. And uh, plenty more flipping laser pistols for me. Plus, I feel like in some ways this is canon. Because, yeah, the Salvatores aren't around in New Vegas. Instead, energy weapons are handled by the Van Graffs. So, I assume these guys are supposed to canonically die. Also, I'm now kind of curious... Is this person willing to say anything special? Because, yeah, you were doing some dodgy dealings, actually, Nicky. Yeah, you were actually collaborating with What's-His-Face. So, would you get out of here? People see us talking like this, they're gonna talk. All right, apparently I'm gonna say nothing more to Nikki about the fact she was cheating the casino. Still, just by virtue of the fact everyone else is dead, including the bartender, I guess this is your casino now, Nikki. So, uh, congrats! And before I forget, the gun shop over here, he said he desperately wanted to see a laser pistol. Now, I've got laser pistols to spare for the minute, so go on, you can have one of these. Oh, right, yes, night. Okay, hang on, guys, we'll just wait here till morning. All right, my good man, if you'd like a laser pistol, then I can most definitely provide you with one of those. And here's something for your trouble. What exactly are we actually looking at here? So, strange looking thing, isn't it? Examines the barrel, and he's given me something. A bunch of chips. I don't know how much, but ooh, that was like a thousand or something. Very nice. Now, I've got more laser pistols yet, so what's one of them worth? 1,400. Fine, I'll gladly just trade that for some ammo for my companions. Yeah, you know what? That'll do. I'm leaving a bit of money on the table, but that's everything I need right there. 
All right, another mission successfully completed for Senor Mordino. Job flipping done. He's dead. Your family is avenged. And so is mine because he was a bit of a dick to me. So there we are. Completed. You have done well. My faith in you is not misplaced. Here is your payment. $500. That is really not much. Like every single pistol I looted off their corpses, $1,200. But whatever. I have no more work for you. I wish to be alone. Leave me now. Do not return. Are you about to be a dick if I say there's some other job I'd like to do? And I've spoken. I have no work for you. Leave and do not return. Um... Okay, I'm going to push it. He's going to shoot me, isn't he? Okay, so once again, we've ended up in this situation, which is unfortunate in many ways. But what's actually even more unfortunate is you've just decided to do this to me when I've actually got myself... Actually, do I want to let this stand? Do I? Oh, yes, laser weaponry. I'm terrible with laser weaponry because it's different from guns, apparently. I'm not done with you yet because there's clearly something going on up at the stable. So, uh, all right, I'll be back in a minute. So this time, when he says I should leave and do not return, which again, not sure what I've done to offend this guy. The one thing I was told to do is always call him Senor Mordino, which I'm pretty sure I didn't, but then I was keeping an eye on the options. It was never an option for me to call him Senor Mordino. So I didn't break the rules. I did exactly what he wanted to. I've murdered another crime boss and all of his bloody bodyguards, but apparently that's just not good enough. So I suppose we just bloody leave quietly. And uh, I tell you what, as soon as we're done with the stables at some point or another, I will be coming back for you. You don't get to live either because you've been very bloody rude. Here we go. Back to the stables. So there was one person I could speak to in here, which was, uh, yeah, the lead scientist. Aside from uh, you're just a generic scientist who allowed you in here. I just sort of let myself in because your security is absolutely terrible. But yeah, I might actually see if I can speak to Marjorie Reed here. See if I can get myself a job because the implication was if I was clever enough, I could just sort of blag my way in. So uh, I do have high intelligence. Let's see how this actually goes. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking for Myron. Can I actually speak to him? Try downstairs in the lab, the guarded door. If you see him, tell him to come up here when he has the chance, if he's not too busy. Fine. So now I've actually got a reason to go and see Myron, which is I've been given a message to pass on to him. So now, uh, let's check back in with his bodyguards here. Hello there, guys. Uh, so, uh, I'm here to see Myron. And I do actually have a job, though he's not really expecting me, but whatever. Look, Myron's expecting me, I'm just going to lie. You ain't going to see him, now piss off before you make me angry. Okay, could you at least give him a message? No, piss off. I'm staying until you let me in. In fact, I'd like to see you try and move me. I'm going to drop a save before we declare war. Like, you know, again. Oh, that's good. We just started a fight with this guy and his own friend just basically burst fired him to death. So that's, that's just bloody convenient. So we'll just get past all of you guys. You should be dead momentarily. Ooh, big burst fire for all of us, which is a bit of a shame. And then we'll just blow you apart. Well done, Vic. Right, so good job all round there. Everybody guns away. We just need to kill these guys because they were being dicks. Now, Myron, are we willing to have a chat now or do you hate me because I just killed your guards? Who are you? And how the hell did you get in here? Where are those jackass guards? And yeah, they're a bit on the dead side, unfortunately. Also, you're talking, that's nice. God damn it. I told Jesus those two morons couldn't guard a stone. So, uh, you iced them, huh? Gonna kill me, too? Honestly, I've got very little reason to, but, uh, no. Why would I actually bother doing that? Maybe. Who, who the hell are you? I'm John. I'm just sort of curious what we're doing here, because I feel like we're at cross-purposes. I'm literally here to just give you a message from the scientist upstairs. Not actually here to murder you at all. Oh, that's so. Well, why are you here? Huh? Thought you could hit Myron up for some free drugs? No, but I'm guessing you're talking about the new Ultra Jet or whatever. Are you stupid? Jet, bitch, jet. You're talking to its maker, its creator, its god. Okay, I don't like this guy. He's a bit of a dick. Yeah, your mother must be very proud. No, I'm not going to say goodbye, though. And you made Jet. Go on, give me the details. Damn right I did. I make the shit 
everybody wants and can't get enough of. Yeah, but why did you make it? Was it just to get yourself filthy rich? Why? Because I could. Family Mordino needed a product. Myron makes a product. Mordino makes Myron happy. At least as happy as they're able. Nice little circle of love, huh? Right, I don't like you or Mordino, to be honest, so I feel like you're all going to end up dead by the end of this. But, uh, yeah, how happy are you really? Because it kind of feels like you're just trapped in an underground bunker by two guards you hated. Pretty much. They give me whores, cash, drugs, my own lab, the creative freedom I need to make magic. But, well, no. No, it's a good gig. No, no, no. Tell me what's going on here, Myron. What's the real scoop? <sighs> Well, see, the Mordinos don't show Myron the R-E-S-P-E-C-T, right? I tell them what they should be doing. They say, shut up, Myron, or go back to the lab, Myron, bastards. All right, and oh, I could travel with this guy. I really don't want to, to be honest, so you should just actually leave Myron. Just, you know, naff off, leave them alone. They've forgotten I'm the reason they control Reno and the reason why Redding will be sucking to their tit in a few months. Most Mordinos got more hair in their butt than brain cells, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so, uh, how should I potentially help you? What could I do about that? And another thing, the Mordinos can't get it through their skulls that I ain't interested in purifying jet. It does what it's supposed to do. I want to make new drugs, not retool old ones, you know? And yeah, you're absolutely too valuable to be here. Just naff off, Myron. Hmm. Their boy wonder leaving town. <laughs> That'd wake him up. Yeah. Yeah, sure would. I bet you'll do just fine out in the wasteland. I like that. Then come with me. Oh, literally I can just invite him with me. There's no other option. Nah, uh, you look full up. Why don't you ditch the tribal? Looks like he takes being a bonehead too seriously. I've decided Myron's going to die now. Alright, guns out everybody, Myron's going for a bit of a dirt nap. So, 95 in the eyes, and he's actually blind at this point, now 95 in the dick. There we go, lovely everyone, ooh, nice! <laughs> Thought you were just going to blow his arms off there, but no, you blew off the entire top of his body. Right, so Myron's dead, that's good, uh, then we just have, uh, ooh, a needler. He's got himself a special gun. Sadly, he never got the chance to use it, though. And six impacts as well. Better and flipping better. Range of 24, damage range of 12 to 24, ammo 10 out of 10. Let's just check on, yeah, what the actual usage of action points is here. And uh, no, 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 go over to it, please. Uh, and it's a standard five with, yes, yeah, six on the actual aim shot. So nothing special, really. I mean, not bad to be honest, but yeah, the 223 pistol just outclasses it in every way aside from need to reload. Then again, what I'll probably do is give that over to uh, Sule, so he can use that as a backup weapon if need be. Oh, and better and better, we got a good selection of drugs right here inside Myron's lockers. So yeah, we've actually now got some Mentats in case we need them in future. Because yeah, they're not the most common things in the world, so it's nice to just have some of them to hand. Now, by any chance am I now fighting my way out here? And it would appear so, yes. Though, the scientists don't seem to want to get involved. So that's good. Uh, that means I can just take out the security and be on our way. I mean, let's be honest, this is basically just a slave farm where they're basically just keeping and dissecting slaves on drugs. So, this is not a good place. And help, I'm being killed. The scientists are on the run right now, so that's all absolutely fine. Reload, and can I actually end the fight right there for the time being? And the answer is, uh, yes, good. The scientists don't actually want to fight. Now, are you guys happy to let me leave, or are you about to be dicks about the whole me killing Myron situation? Yeah, I figured you might be about to be dicks. Luckily, you're not actually that, you know, good at your jobs or anything. Right, go over to this. Double aim shot in the face for you. Right, you go straight down on the ground, my good man, and then, if we're lucky, one eye shot to finish you over. Right there, beautiful double critical, finishes you guys off. I'm a bit low on the old uh, health for the time being, by the way, so you know what? I do have myself absolutely tons of stim packs right now, so I'll gladly use some of that. Right, with Myron dead, their operations taken care of, I really didn't want him as a companion. He was a very unpleasant piece of work, so... I feel like we've done the right thing there. Straight back over to New Reno, by the way. Let's actually, you know, park the car where it's supposed to be. 
There we go. Now I know where my car is. Absolutely flipping lovely. Right, so that's the second family a total bust, but we haven't ruined things with Bishop yet. And there's the fourth family, the Wrights. How about we see what we can do with both of them next week, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm convinced there's at least one family I could not screw up with. And I'm feeling good about Bishop, though that will need a little bit of a trip down to the NCR. Hopefully we will get to that next week. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nut. And this has been Fallout 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got... I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out... Die, you moving bastards! Die! Die! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.